Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. My name is Sava and today we're going to discuss something completely different regarding distribution functions and goodness of fit. If you recall, in one of the previous videos we discussed the Cauchy distribution and how to reasonably accurately estimate its parameters. What is so special about the Cauchy distribution? Well, first of all, it produces some of the fattest tails you'll see in mathematical statistics. It accomplishes that by using the arctangent function for the cumulative distribution function. The Cauchy distribution has an infinite mean and uh, higher moments are either infinite or even undefined. And that's bad news for parameter estimation because the sample moments that we can obtain easily from uh, empirical data of some variable that might be distributed according to the Cauchy distribution or not, they would be utterly meaningless. So if you try and measure these moments empirically from the finite sample that you've got of a distribution that might be distributed according to the Cauchy law or not, you'll obviously get finite values, but those will yield no information regarding the true nature of the distribution. If you try and measure the sample mean, for example, you'll get a finite value, but as you increase the sample size, it will behave explosively. It can increase substantially by the sheer means of including some extreme outlier or decrease substantially, so you wouldn't see any convergence. And convergence and the asymptotical behavior of sample means and true means, theoretical means, are what we seek when we try and estimate our distributions and th their parameters using the method of moments, for example. So, in case of the Cauchy distribution, this issue stands the, perhaps the clearest. You cannot really use the moments alone to get any plausible value for the Cauchy distribution parameters. And here, those are mu, which is the location parameter, and gamma, which is the scale parameter. They fulfill the same function, they play the same role as mean and standard deviation play in the normal distribution, for example, or in the hypersecond distribution, and so on and so forth. But they have no such correspondence to the moments of the statistical distributions, because, well, those are infinite or undefined, again, in the case of the Cauchy distribution. And uh, if you recall, what we did when we estimated the Cauchy distribution in one of the previous videos is that we took half of the interquartile range as our estimate of the scale parameter gamma and the sample median as our estimation of mu. This approach is decent, but it's not the best that we can go for. The best approach that one can take when trying to estimate the parameters of such distributions is the maximum likelihood approach. Well, what it means, first of all, you need to estimate the likelihood function that actually the distribution that you observe empirically matches the theoretical distribution that you are trying to estimate. And obviously the likelihood function L is a function of two variables, mu, the location parameter, and gamma, the scale parameter that you are trying to calibrate so that the likelihood that your empirical distribution is exactly the same as the theoretical distribution is maximized. Mathematically, this notion can be expressed as the product of the probability density functions, notated here as small f's, over the whole range of our observations. So i goes from 1 to n, where n is the sample size. So in our case, it's going to be 1258, but that's not the point. So we're trying to maximize this very large product by varying the parameters mu and gamma. Well, first of all, let's talk about the probability density function for the Cauchy distribution. One of the benefits of actually first approaching maximum likelihood estimation for the Cauchy distribution is that the probability density function for the Cauchy distribution is relatively simple. The overall concept, generally, is that the probability density function is the first derivative of the cumulative distribution function. Sometimes it's tricky 
to actually get a nicely looking formula. But in case of the Cauchy distribution, it's really simple. Because first of all, what do we need to do? Well, if we want to take a derivative of that, first of all, we just get rid of plus one half because it's a constant and when you differentiate, constants go away. Then you just need to look at the derivative of this component. First of all, one over pi stays intact because that's the basically the constant multiple of some function, so it stays there. Then we need to apply the chain rule. Here we've got the arctangent function of x minus mu over gamma. So applying the chain rule, the derivative of the argument of the arctangent function is 1 over gamma. Then we need to multiply it by 1 over gamma as per the chain rule. So that's why it's 1 over pi times gamma. And then we just need to remember the derivative of the arctangent function simply. And the derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared. But here, as our argument is not x, but rather a linear modification of x, so scaled x, we just need to get that 1 plus that squared and 1 over that. So that's the derivative of the cumulative distribution function for the Cauchy distribution. So again, that's our probability density function for the Cauchy distribution. And we can actually just figure out what the product is for different values of x, all of the observable sample x's, and uh, maximize this, this function, this product, by just varying mu and gamma over reasonable intervals. But what is simpler mathematically is to consider log likelihood, not just likelihood. Because, well, if you take the logarithm of some large product, well, because of the uh, properties of the logarithm, logarithm of a times b, provided a and b are positive, is just the logarithm of a plus the logarithm of b. So, taking the natural logarithm of both sides here gets us a very nice expression. We converted this product into the sum of logarithms, natural logarithms, of probability density functions. And we could do that simply because the values of the probability density functions are always positive, as the cumulative distribution function is strictly increasing. As x increases the probability that a random variable that adheres to this distribution function is not higher than that x should increase. That's why the derivative of this function is always positive. Well, conceptually, it should be the case for all continuous distribution functions, but here we can just look at that mathematically. This is non-negative, so at least zero. This is at least one, and those are positive. So one over a positive number is always positive. So that means that we can convert our likelihood into log likelihood for uh, continuous uh, probability density functions. Then we just need to maximize this sum and figure out which values of mu and gamma satisfy this condition. And obviously for simpler, distribution functions like the Laplace distribution, um, it can be very easily solved mathematically. We can get a closed form solution what those values of uh, location and scale parameters are. Uh, in that case, we might want to approach it numerically so that not to solve the equations analytically. And we can do it using numerical optimization in Excel. Without further ado, let's approach this problem. First of all, we need to consider the uh, probability density function of the Cauchy distribution for our uh, maximum likelihood estimate. Not actually even it, but the logarithm of it, because we want to maximize log likelihood, which is the sum of the logarithms of the probability density function for all of our observations. So, first of all, we need to take the natural logarithm and the uh, expression which we want to take the logarithm of is 1 over pi times gamma and gamma is our scale parameter and we want to calibrate it so we take this gamma here and lock the row here as we don't want it to change for all of our observations times 1 plus x 
which is our rent return, and it should change from estimation to estimation, minus our location parameter mu, and we want to estimate it using solver, using the maximization criterion, and we need to scale it by the scale parameter gamma. And then this whole bracket should be squared, as in the function itself. And then we close the bracket so that we see that those are all in the denominator. Close the bracket so that we take the logarithm for the all and enforce it. Obviously, we have divided by zero because we haven't calculated the parameters of mu and gamma yet. But let's just assume that we start with our approximate solution we got in our previous video. Let's assume that our mu is actually the sample median, and our scale parameter gamma is just the half of the interquartile range, as we did in our approximate solution again. And now what we can do is we can drag that down, and then we can figure out the total sum of those logarithms of the probability density function. So we need to sum them all. So now we have to maximize this log likelihood by varying mu and gamma, the parameters of the Cauchy distribution. So we can go to solver, set the objective as this cell, where we calculate the sum of log likelihoods, maximize it, because we want to maximize the likelihood, and change the cells where we've got our distribution parameters, so mu and gamma. You also need to make sure that those are values, not formulas, because it will behave weirdly if those are formulas. Now, what are the constraints? Well, there is no constraint on mu, but there is a constraint on gamma. Gamma should be positive. And now we can just click OK and click Solve. And we see that as compared to our first approximation that we did using half of the interquartile range and sample median, the log likelihood actually increased a little bit, but only a little bit. Let's see what happens with our parameters. Well, mu didn't change much, but gamma actually uh, decreased a little bit. So it means that if you use maximum likelihood estimations, your parameters will be slightly different, but not by a lot different than your original estimates that you did using a method of moment or some other rule of thumb. But now, the main question that one should ask in that case is, which of the methods give you, gives you the best fit? Well, let's measure fit using the supremum which is a very common concept that we discussed in Kolmogorov Smirnov test video, which is basically just the maximum absolute deviation of the empirical distribution function from the theoretical distribution function. We've already got our cumulative distribution function estimated using the uh, method of moments, or rather just this rule of thumb with the uh, interquartile range and median, but now we can do the same for the parameters that we estimated using maximum likelihood. So, again, just to recap the Cauchy distribution function, it is 1 divided by pi times the arctangent of the ranked return minus the location parameter mu, and we take this one, not that one, because that's the one we estimated using maximum likelihood. We lock the row here, divide by the scale parameter gamma and lock the row here as well, and then we add one half. And now we can bottom right click it all the way down and see, even graphically, how the fit is similar, yet sometimes the deviations become material. If we look at the gray line, which is the distribution function using the simple method, and the yellow line, which is the distribution that has been estimated using the maximum likelihood method. But to have a definite answer to which method is better in that particular case, let's calculate the suprema of both. So the, again, the maximum absolute deviation of those theoretical distributions from the empirical distribution. So max of the absolute 
deviation between this array and the array of the empirical distribution. And here we need to lock the columns because we want to drag it for both theoretical distributions, the simple method and the maximum likelihood estimation. So here we see that the supremum for the simple method we applied previously is roughly over 5%, so 5.19%, which is relatively bad. And the supremum for the maximum likelihood estimation is 4.82%. Still not the best, but considerably better than the other method. And that's basically why one should apply maximum likelihood estimation when they can, when it's not prohibitively difficult in terms of computations. But as I have shown you now, the maximum likelihood estimation is reasonably easy to apply in Excel if you know the probability density function. If you don't know it, you can just apply some simple differentiation if you know derivatives. And the solver function can save you a lot of time and effort if you don't want to look for an exact analytical solution. And that's all there is for the maximum likelihood estimation of parameters for the Cauchy distribution. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I would be eager to see any suggestions for any further topics on business, economics or finance that you want me to investigate in future videos. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and stay tuned.